Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Today we have uh, an important uh, uh, artist of uh, ballet. His name is uh, Oliver Essigman. He is uh, from Germany and uh, he is uh, uh, working as choreographer, ballet teacher and uh, ballet dancer. Good morning, uh, Mr. Uh, Oliver Essigman. How are Hello, you? Hello, Jean-Pierre. Good morning. I nice to meet you. you. And uh, so I'm very pleased to have you online today. <clears throat> and I hope that your interview will be followed by many people and many artists of ballet, not only in Europe, but everywhere in the world. Thank you very much for the invitation. And for the chance to talk here you are, on your channel. You are mostly welcome. Um, I will start doing the same question that I always do to all the members. How did you start learning ballet? <laughs> what motivated you to learn ballet? And who in your family encouraged you to follow the study of ballet? So um, I started very late with the education as a ballet dancer. Before I was, uh, when I, uh, in my youth, so like with uh, the beginning of the 80s, there was this break dancing from New York. I saw the films. I was very, very fascinated about the very high quality of virtuosity that they can do on the floor and dance on the streets and I was like I started to do the same it was a, a wave in in Germany mm. dance to break dance hip-hop and all this and in Nuremberg we had a very very famous uh, break dancer he was many times invited uh, on television and I was very very fascinated Mm -hmm. uh, I started to dance in this normal waltz and uh, cha cha and all this, and um, I, I was invited uh, for the balls, mm -hmm. the break dance group. That's the way I started with the dance. At what age did you start? It's like with 16, 15, 16 years. I started doing this break dance. Yes. Then. Uh, um, what motivated me mostly to start ballet was the film um, The Turning Point with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Yes. And when I saw him, I was like, I couldn't believe what he's doing. Uh, it's until today, it's like <laughs> amazing what, he's can, what he can do. And he, he will stay always be the best dancer in the world. And uh, I wanted to be like him and I wanted to do all these tricks and uh, yeah. He was very and inspiring. He was very inspiring for many dancers. For many, many dancers, yes. I met a lot who <laughs> had the same fascination like me. So um, then I asked my mother, oh, please let me do ballet with 16 years old. And she was, but one year before she wanted to put me into dance. And then she believe me anymore that I motivated enough to do ballet. Yes. Her brother from my mother, is a, he was a ballet dancer in the Leipzig Ballet. Yes. And then he, um, after 12 years in the Leipzig Ballet, he stuck and become a dance duo with his uh, wife, quite famous in uh, the German Democratic Republic in East Germany. Yeah. Um, uh, if you want, I, I have a photo of them. I don't know if you can see. Ah. This is my uncle with my aunt. <laughs> wow. So nice. they are in the, in the, in the, and that's in the ballet studio of the Leipziger Ballet. It still exists. And do they still? So, um, they... so I, have a, I have a relation to dance and to ballet. Do they still so with 18 years old, I could uh, convince my mother to start. And then we go to the opera house of Nuremberg, uh, Miss Krema. She said, no, you cannot do this here with me. But go to uh, Miss Kostic. She was from um, Croatia. 
with her husband. He was from Belgrade. He was a violinist. Yes. And they had a ballet school in Erlangen. It's a university city for medicine, very famous, Siemens. And um, I make an audition. And then she said, yes, okay, let's try. It's late, but let's try. So half a year, we tried out. And she said, yeah, okay, I trust you. you. You can do it. So I did three years education with her. She um, teacher from my uh, from Mrs. Kostic was uh, huh. Petersburg, and Mr. Kumisnikov. He said, always, if you, someone asks, you have to say, I uh, was educated by Mr. Komisnikov. He's quite famous. Yeah. So um, that was, uh, so I learned Baganova style. Yeah. Then I got an invitation from the aunt from my mother, New York. I wanted to see Baryshnikov live. And we um, make it possible that I can go to New York and visit my aunt, the, the aunt from my mother. And um, I saw on Broadway, unfortunately, not as a dancer, but as an actor, uh, Borishnikov. He gave me his sign, his signature. I was very, very happy to meet him. And uh, I visited the School of American Ballet in the New York City Ballet, and I watched the, the training there. And then I realized it was uh, male groups, only male dancers. And I was like, Oliver, you have to work and compete with male dancers. Because in my school, we're only female dancers. And I was like, no, we have to go for audition and make find a group where you compete with male dancers. Mm -hmm. So I was going uh, to Cologne, make an audition there in the school, and then they accepted me and they become my teachers. And it was Mr. Wontuschka from Prague, and Mr. Zimski, Andrzej Zimski from Warsaw, from Poland. And they are my teachers, and uh, I finished dance education in Cologne with a diploma. And um, yeah, because of the connection with Mr. Wondroszka, um, it was possible to make an audition with my partner, my dance partner. She was from Paris, from the Conservatoire de Paris. We went together, we were invited to Prague, to the National Theatre, to Mr. Vlastimil Harapes. And he accepted us. And so I become almost the first German dancer in National Theater of Prague in 1992. That is nice. That's the way it started. So how, um, just a question that uh, doesn't have to do. Is your the uncle and aunt, the photo that you have shown me, are still working, are still teaching, working in ballet? Still teaching in Leipzig. In his school. And do you go often to see them? Unfortunately, it's not possible so, to come so often to Leipzig. Oh, it's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> uh, so how was your first impact as a, you were the 15, 16 years old when you started with Vaganova? And how was your physique responding to this uh, first uh, ballet training, which is not very easy because uh, when you are 10 years old, it's much easier because your, oh, yes. body, your body is more supple, more flexible. But when you start and you are 16, uh, you don't have the same elasticity. 18, 18 years old. Yes. I started with 18. Yes, so uh, so you are already a man. You are not a young boy. No. So uh, how how was your impact uh, or in the movements? Uh, did you had difficulties following and doing performing the movements at the bar in the center, pied dans la main? You know those difficult things. Uh, can you describe that? So um, it was. I mean, I was a very good sportsman and um, I had very good coordination and I started to do this breakdance, so yeah. I was a little bit into dance already, 
and into listening to music and into the rhythm and I have a very good rhythm feeling. Yeah. So you But of course, my music. body was not uh, was not ready for yes. ballet. It's, uh, it took me over 10 years to split my legs for but God, it, it was a really hard time to yes. reach this goal for me. But I could jump very good. Yeah. To hold the positions and everything, it, uh, it was a challenge in the beginning, the coordination. Uh, I had so much fun with it. I, I push myself totally, I, I throw myself into it, and uh, it was such a joy uh, to listen to music, learn this coordinations and uh, all the steps. Bar, you um, learn the steps in the, at the bar, actually, it's, you can learn quite fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, mm, if, the more the, the the more complicated the variations are, the more is the it's a it's a challenge for you for the brain for the body. Yeah, but, yeah. I kept forward. I, I didn't stop uh, developing. Resignate to, to be to feel sad about it. But yeah, of course, I was always. Uh, Hunting that uh, yeah I, I'm good enough yeah you know, yes. for this uh, for as, as a professional dancer because I mean other people coming from Paris Opera, Bolshoi Petersburg, <laughs> Broad <laughs> Ballet, <laughs> they're standing next to me at the bar and they had uh, eight years uh, <laughs> school from ten or twelve years old <laughs> like oh, I hope I can yeah. compete with them now. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, so it, but I made it. I, I they accepted me. So, uh, but it helps. I worked hard. It helps you to improve your technique when you work with great artists at the bar in the class. The lucky thing was that already in my private school in Erlangen, it was a quite a high level. Uh, um, I actually was following one dancer who was also accepted in the school. Uh, she was our best dancer in our school. She went to Cologne, um, and I followed her example. Yeah. And she later then went to the uh, company in Düsseldorf. Yeah. So um, I had a had a had a good competition with with also with already this female dancers and a very good teacher with Mrs. Kostic. Yeah. And then uh, when I went to Cologne. Uh, the good thing with my teachers, they were very patient with me. Yes, I can see that what you have described so far, you had uh, very good teachers yes. who, who knew how to develop the art of ballet and dance because you had a strong musicality before uh, with the break dance. And, uh, but they knew how to develop uh, the classical ballet technique in your body, on your body, because uh, you were maybe alien to it in the beginning, but then they knew how to give you that uh, strength and that technique, uh, which you have developed so well afterwards. Um, what were the ballet that you have been dancing in? Tell me again, which ballet? Which, which were the ballet that you have been dancing, uh, the choreographic ballet that you have been participating? So, um, I danced almost the whole classical repertory, yeah. I would say, except uh, La Baia there, mm. my favorite ballet. I never danced. <laughs> <laughs> but I danced in Don Quixote. That was my uh, debut my premiere as a dancer. They when I came when I arrived in Prague, they just pushed me into the Toriador and say, "Look, come on, let's try, and we will see if we can make it." And I successfully made it, and I could keep the position. And I was uh, then from that on. Uh, the lucky thing with Prague was that we had a lot of performances. Good, uh, like. 11 or 12 performances in a month. That's, I would say, a lot. All the repertory, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, Nutcracker. 
and uh, Sylvia uh, and so on and a lot of fairy tales but also the modern stuff from uh, Jerzy Kilian he's from Prague yes. or Hans von Manen and then uh, you know, Robert Barlock is more all famous great, in all Czech great, Republic uh, and uh, Lieber Watzulik is also the very famous in, in Czech Republic when he was modern, uh, contem more contemporary in the Mats X style Yes. So I learned a lot of uh, choreographies in Prague. Uh, what followed me my whole life was uh, Swan Lake. I always danced in Swan Lake everywhere <laughs> was Swan Lake. But also Nutcracker, yeah. Then uh, modern stuff. Um, at the end of my career as a dancer, I was in the Leipziger Ballet and we danced Uwe Scholz. And uh, for me, this was a great challenge. This is very technically very high level and uh, we were also going on tours there and this was uh, for me a, like a great honor to dance in, in a ballet from Uwe Scholz or I dance also in the Taming of the Shrew from John Cranko. Wow. Miss Zingeridis, she accepted me uh, to be part of this ballet when I, I auditioned in the Leipzig Ballet. Great honor for me to, to dance in this piece. Nice. And Kenneth McMillan's, um, oh God, I forgot the ballet. One piece of uh, from Kenneth McMillan. And uh, what else? Uh, Xing Peng Wang, uh, he's now in Dortmund, the director. We, uh, we were working together in Meiningen. Yes. It was great, great neoclassical work. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a whole range of Biographers I work with, Vasco Wellenkamp from, he's the founder of the Gulbenkian Ballet in Portugal. I work with him in, in Croatia, in Zagreb. I work with um, Nitz Christe. He was, uh, I think, the director of Scapino Ballet. I work with him in Innsbruck. I work with Jochen Ulrich. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the director of the dance company in Cologne. Mm -hmm. we, we, I had the premiere. It was a uh, three three ballets about the Agilev company, and we dance uh, this in uh, in Innsbruck. Yeah, it was a great performance. So you have been working with great great names of uh, of. Oh the... yeah, yes, I had great choreographers, great dancers. With me, I mean, I, uh, we had a visit from the his opera in in Zagreb for Swan Lake with Jose Martinez and Agnes Lex too. Yeah. It's amazing to see these dancers on stage working. Yes. Or in Prague, the, for the Taming of the Shrew, the dancers from Stuttgart Ballet came. Jason Riley, Maria Eichwald, Jin Kang. It's great to see them dance. It's, uh, it's how, how was amazing. Your, how was your impression uh, when uh, you were working with all these great artists were, was, there, was there something similar between one and the other, or each one has his own or her own character, her own way to express, to talk to the dancers, or was something basic all the same? Very high discipline. Yes. Very friendly, very decent. Not so over the top, but very decent. And uh, you don't need to prove anything. They can show it right away on the stage. <laughs> and yeah. and um, but, uh, it, sometimes I even have the feeling, are they realizing what they are doing just there? Because this is so amazing what they are doing. And uh, mm, yeah. And the choreographers, um, The motivation is really high of um, to, to give something from yourself, from your heart yes. to the world. Yes. This is so inspiring and you um, get motivated from that. It's, this is coming to you. Yes. So it's my, all the hard work, all the pain, injuries, it's worth it to meet these people and work with them for this goal is yes, yes. wonderful. Yes. 
Did you have any injuries while uh, dancing? Uh... Yeah, I had many injuries. Many, okay, I had injuries. Yes. And very painful, but um, I could uh, heal myself. And um, lucky me, I mean, I started very late. I had to see dancers, they have the perfect uh, curriculum for a dancer. They started very early and were, were very talented. And then they had to stop in the middle of the 20s yeah. because of an injury, yeah, you know, with the knee or the hip, something broke. Yeah. And they're finished, finished. Yes. Yeah, so I was uh, really, um, I was really lucky to work so long, although I had also injuries. Yeah. It's very easy to get an injury. You have to be very, you have to learn to, to, to control your power, to strengths, what you have in your side, your body, and, and yeah. to know today I can do like this, and tomorrow I cannot do like this. I have to rest, I have to s slow down. It's a very high discipline and a very good knowledge of yourself, what you can give at that day. I agree. It's always the, the challenge yes. to, to know that, yeah? yeah. To know uh, the path, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, and, um, I was very lucky that I could also, mm, sometimes you come home after the performance and your whole body is shaking or the music is so strong in your head, you have to calm down and you cannot. You lay down in your bed and the music is inside of your head. You listen to the whole music again. You see the whole ballet and you cannot calm down. It's inside of you. And then sometimes the, the, the muscles are so much shaking. You have to bring this all down. You have to learn, especially with breathing, you can do this, yeah? Yes. Cool down. You have to cool down your body again. Yeah, you. You have to learn how to distress, how to take all the. Totally. Uh, yeah. this, it's uh, a big challenge. Yes. We Even should... at the performance, and sometimes at the performance, you 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 have some very um, challenging uh, choreography, which is really hard. You go go in the back of the stage and you have to lay down immediately and cool down and bring the, the muscles and everything that uh, mm -hmm. respiration down and slow down that you can do the next thing yes it's, is there something that the audience doesn't know uh, that uh, all dancers experience because uh, the emotions that are in each ballet are the different and are challenging because in each performance, when you go on stage, it's like a new performance. So uh, there is a, a great energy, a, a great stamina that you need when you go on stage and you perform. And uh, I think that uh, you have done that in a brilliant way because that was the best school you ever had, not only the training, but also performing in this way. I uh, I was very lucky to be in all these companies. We meet all these dancers. I mean, I I was very um, I changed a lot the companies. I, I didn't stay too long at the company. I, yeah. Maybe two years I stay. Most I stay two years and I go to the next company. Yeah. And um, I make all these experiences with all these uh, choreographers. And uh, I have a very wide range of variety of choreographers. Yeah. From contemporary to classical to neoclassical, and theater, opera. Operette, musical, I danced West Side Story many times, three times I danced uh, in productions of West Side Story. I learned to sing, quite amazing that um, in, when I was in Nordhausen, they give us singing lessons because uh, they give the, the ballet company yeah. um, the opportunity to, to make the evening of West Side Story and, and give them roles also as uh, 
in, in West Side Story, and I learned to sing, and then I discovered my singing. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it was why it's so good also for dancers to sing because of the breathing that you yes. more deeply breathe. Yes. More deeply. This is, uh, is a bit uh, for dancers, they, they short breathe. So it's more difficult maybe for dancers. Yeah, so it's good to have a singing lessons for da for dancers. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, you were lucky that you had a good voice for the, for the singing. Yes, the, uh, my teacher he discovered it, and I'm very uh, grateful for that he was so patient with me. And, uh, I wasn't lucky like you uh, when I was singing. Uh, all of the windows were falling. <laughs> pieces and my voice was terrible and it's still terrible <laughs> I, I continued uh, the singing lessons in Innsbruck the opera singer from Norway yeah he told me if you want you can become an uh, opera singer oh that's nice. but my love to dance and to ballet yeah. was too strong I, yeah so I couldn't resist to continue <laughs> dancing I I much in love with dance and ballet yeah. Yes, well, uh, you were more inclined to the to perform uh, like a dancer, not like a singer. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I saw them uh, in. I was dancing in Bregenz, yes. the biggest uh, sea stage of the world in uh, Bodensee. That's Constance Lake, uh, close to it's the triangle of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Yeah. And it's a beautiful stage, and uh, I'm, I was there three times uh, and saw the singers from the greatest singers of the world come there and sing there. Yes. And uh, I love to see them, but um, it never catched me up that to do the same, to, to, yeah. to compete with them or to do it. No. So as a dancer, um... Do you find a great difference and a great challenge working with dancers coming from uh, other companies? Although when you were uh, accepted in new ballet companies, uh, did you find it difficult integrating yourself, not only as a technique, but also within the ballet company members? Would they accept you as a new member easily or they were looking at you a little bit suspicious so 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh this would be a far longer discussion about that um i'm from germany so uh when i came to Czech republic uh, our bad history come to me immediately. Yes. But uh, after two weeks or one month, uh, they decided, ah, oh, he's okay. We accept him. <laughs> they <Yeah>. adopted you. <laughs> so, and, um, but that was really great that they did this. They were really open hearted. Yeah. And anyway, uh, yeah, there was also in Ljubljana, when I was in Ljubljana, the, we were quite a mix of, uh, I mean, I was the only German there too. Yes. Um, so there were dancers from Russia, Ukraine, yes. Romania, and some form, former Yugoslavia. Yeah. There the situation was more complicated. Yes. Because there were the groups of the Russians, the group of the Romanians, and the Slovenians, and the... they were divided. But, but the, the yes. big goal is we love dance. Yes, and we are a family. Exactly, we're a family of the dance that keep us together, and that's that's it's overcoming all those um, prejudices and. That's why I love dance. It's such a bridge. Yes, is it connecting the, the heart of someone? Yes, it's uh, uh, it's it's opening my heart, yes. and I can reach someone with this goal that I'm fascinated about dance, and can reach everyone with that. Yes, 
And it's our bridge and that's why I love dance. It's for dance is so, to me, a peacekeeper. <laughs> it's a peacekeeper, it's bringing peace to people because we cannot connect through dance. We don't understand each other maybe so well, we don't speak so good English. Yeah. We immediately have a connection to talk about Giselle was one leg or some great dancer and uh, we become friends with that. Yeah. And, uh, in Leipzig, for example, we were a company with um, we were the company with the most different nations of Germany <laughs> at that time, 2005 and 2007. And uh, oh, we were such a family. We we're such a family. Ah, and when I hear sometimes the stories of the dancers, how they how they discover that they love to dance and how they go to a school somewhere far away from their origin. I'm like, wow, oh, what you did for dance. Amazing. I love all the stories and love my colleagues and uh, I forgive them when they want to do reach more <laughs> than uh, to get that solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, it's you understandable. know, this is what uh, should be applied um, today. Because um, today also, uh, due to the international situation that we have now, um, unfortunately, uh, due to also great ignorance, but uh, politics is separating, is destroying in a couple of minutes what ballet is trying to create and to fabricate and to construct. You see, uh, ballet takes years for to create something, while politics in a few seconds destroy everything. So people mind, people mind today, uh, unfortunately, they are more inclined to follow the politics and not the art. And uh, within the art, we can all be united. It's not with it's... politics. Because this politics is, this is, is this is the secret. <laughs> this is the secret that we unite through art. So we've all do this. It's, a, it's something peaceful. It's yes. and it's something where we can give our heart and open our heart and be yes. fascinated. So, and what is what uh, I wanted to say is that ballet just conquered the whole world exactly. uh, with uh, maybe Billy Ruiz and. Uh, Especially Anna Pavlova, she she went to South America and all South America's dancing ballet, <laughs> yeah. dancing German stories. Yeah, <laughs> so dance. it's amazing. Albrecht, it's a German name. It's like it's some one lake footpath. It's German stories, and they are get got so much fascinated about that. It's an amazing story. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, w this is why, with all due respect, that we must uh, also bring to politicians and to politics, unfortunately. But they must understand that ballet, the world of ballet, the world of art, must also um, perform within its own freedom. And a, a dance artist of all companies, of all countries, must perform with their own freedom. So uh, the freedom in ballet is very important. And this is why I think that um, ballet dancers, ballet companies, choreographers, teachers should be united today more than ever. Yes. Because yes. it's very important, you know. Even if there is a, um, how do you say, a competition between one company who is doing Swan Lake and the other who is doing also Swan Lake, and sometimes one Swan Lake looks better than the other one, but that doesn't matter. The important is the, the intention, the good intention to, to make people work, to make people perform in a good and clean mind and way. And uh, as you said, you have the experience that you had with all the dancers you had, you were like a family. Definitely. 
we're still like a family. I mean, I'm I'm still connected to dancers from all over the world, and um, we keep contact through Facebook mostly. Yeah. Then pictures. I can see what they are doing. They have many of them have also now play schools yeah. or another life or uh, <laughs> it, they sent a post <laughs> and uh, we when we talk with each other i feel that we are we still we are still family they, they yeah. need to talk to someone who is also a dancer yes because the that's that's, that's our little i would say our little problem that for other people not so easy to understand what is our issues what is our how well when we're outside of the theater yeah. sometimes you know if we don't want to we couldn't decide to start in a new job yeah so I wanted to stay in my world and be it and continue as a teacher give my knowledge further and um, i choose a place uh, is, is challenging yeah. nuremberg is for me um, a place where we can develop more the yeah. Yeah. art of dance and play although we have a lot of schools it, it depends also on the interest Yes. And uh, the, the discipline of those dancers who come to me. Yes. What they want. Yes. And, uh, I don't see that they want so much. They want to be easy. <laughs> That's hard work. <laughs> uh, Mr. Oliver, uh, how much time did you spend uh, in the dancing? 10 years, 12 years, 15? Let me see. Uh, uh, six. Uh, 1986. Uh, 1986 until 2007. Uh, 17. 17 uh, I mean, I'm still dancing. I still had a performance in Berlin. Okay. So I, 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 uh, at, uh, at what age did you start <laughs> teaching? Count until today, so 2023, and teaching. I do teaching since 2009. Yes. I do really teaching. Oh. I went to my uh, former school in Erlangen, and I teach there. I teach in Nuremberg. Yes. I'm teaching in uh, close to Bamberg, and I think this region. I teach here. Yes. And did oh. choreographies. Do you do you enjoy more dancing? Teaching or choreography? I enjoyed so much dancing. I, I miss it, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I miss it. On the other side, I'm, I'm, I don't miss the pain. <laughs> the pain I don't miss. <laughs> no, no, no. The pain is uh, horrible. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's only good training that you can overcome the pain. Yes. Well, without pain, you you, you don't have. Very... That's why you. Yeah, that's why you need to laugh so much, dance yeah. because it's, yeah. it's connected with a lot of pain. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I love to teach. Yes. Um, I would like to make more choreographies. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, is it how is the situation now in Germany for the ballet dancer, for the choreographer, and for the ballet teacher? <laughs> what means ballet? Here they are more on a very um, way to more con contemporary. They want to dance more and more contemporary, yeah. more and more small. Even especially in the smaller companies, they, they they do more and more contemporary and don't do classical dance anymore. Hmm. So uh, why why is it uh, that? 
for yeah. what reason they prefer to do contemporary they, um, especially in germany they they think that it's old fashioned hmm. and only it should exist in very high classical companies in the world that's very common hmm. me it's prejudice I, i i love classical dance why we should not dance classical and uh, it's very common here and it also convinced convinced the, the politicians yes who come into the theater and uh, get the job yes so it's, it's the politics the intendant and then you the ballet director or dance director so yeah you become um, i don't want to say fashion you become more um, um goal to to contemporary anyway contemporary then uh, choreographers um they want to that's their way to to express it's yes, it's yes. Uh, it's it's a trend yes, yes. Uh, in, I, i would say in usa it's more uh, they, they <laughs> love to do more classical uh, with nutcracker swan lake and all those things and they're very technical size and they have very very high technical dancers and here it, uh, it's becoming not necessary anymore yeah you know, to be so high classical technique yes it's that's a trend in germany i i see yes especially also now more and more uh, in the you know more and more in the, in the big companies mm uh well maybe you know uh there's nothing bad i mean in doing a contemporary uh, no, good, not at all it's, it's a very good thing uh but of course the classical ballet is the base of everything you know it's the main key it's like a passepartout key i mean uh, with a classical ballet you can do contemporary you can do all type of of dances if you have a good base of classical ballet absolutely <clears throat> and uh, but this of course uh, comes to the choice of the dancers himself or herself what she decide to do and also of the ballet company what repertoire they want to do uh, there are many ballet companies who do the both contemporary and classical and there are some who only do or classical or contemporary it depends it depends of the country it depends of the, of the point of view of the choreographers of the artistic director but um in your case now uh as a choreographer what is your wish that you would like to create in the future because you are still very young But uh, what is your wish that you would like to create, or for Germany, or for the Europe, something new, something that comes out of the normal lines? If you have the possibility, I think uh, in Germany we are missing a bit um, story ballets. Hmm. When uh, um, they 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 sometimes I see that they are using the. The classical terms of Giselle uh, or other Swan Lake mm -hmm. in, in contemporary way. I would like to do neoclassical or classical dance mm. and create new stories in classical dance and mm. express in classical way. Yeah. And I think that we uh, it would be nice to have a goal that, that uh, choreographers also find that this this way to express yeah in, in a classical way and give new stories and that would be great yeah because there's so many to stories to tell oh yes there are many <laughs> things and many stories and uh, from real to fairy tale <laughs> of some fairy yes. i mean that's why that's what i have learned in czech republic because in czech republic they love to tell stories Yes, and they they continue in this way. Yeah, If you go there, you can see it. Yeah. We did uh, when I was in Pilsen. Um, we danced uh, some like it hard. 
Mm-hmm. The, the famous movie with Marilyn Monroe and Tony Curtis. And I, I loved to do it with a jazz orchestra on the stage. And uh, it was such a nice uh, choreography. Why we cannot do this in, in Germany? Yeah. <laughs> I miss it a, a little bit, the good mood. And sometimes it's so become so serious with contemporary dance, what they, what they express. Now, now that you have accumulated all this great experience and uh, this uh, great repertoire of modern dance, classical dance, and you as a choreographer, wouldn't you like or be able or have the possibility to create and innovate something on your own for <laughs> the German uh, young generation of dancers? Because otherwise... Um, I did a ballet for, the, for a music festival in Bamberg in yeah. 2016, Tanya in Bamberg, and I worked with school kids. Yes. They didn't know so much about they some can do classical ballet, some can do some artistic stuff or dance, hip hop, and I just really throw them together and we, we created on classical music, Checkmate. It's a ballet actually from the Royal Ballet yes. already, a wonderful ballet. And with this music, we created a whole performance and uh, I showed it on this festival. Yes. So, yes, I would like to continue to create stories and yes. in a classical way, neoclassical, yes. I would prefer. I very much love the style of Uwe Scholz, Balanchine, yes. of course, but he's very, very amazing choreographer, yes. Balanchine. <laughs> And, and very technical also. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I had the chance to see them once at in 1989 when I visited New York and I saw the dancers. I went to Whelan and uh, all those famous dancers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. It really inspired me. Have you ever tried to choreograph or work or teach um in United States or in Canada? Never I have no contacts there. So I, I would would love to work there, of course, yes, but I have no contacts. Yes. Because I think I think that uh, you could be um I don't know how to say a new a new wave, a new hope for the uh, ballet of tomorrow. Thank you. Would love to love to work with them in uh, yeah in a classical company and uh, give them a new uh, inspirational ballet if I if they let me. Yeah, because I mean you know when you work in a ballet company, they only accept the big names as choreographers. Yes. One who have already a big reputation of being the best choreographers. But I think that in ballet companies today, they must also give a chance to new choreographers. To get okay. It's not so easy to get that chance. Yeah. Yes, but we have, we have to, to have a good contact. But uh, yes, but we have to. We, uh, ballet companies must uh, give a new possibility to these choreographers with new programs. We, you see, accepting new choreographers. Sometimes you may have, you say, "Oh, this one is really good. Why don't we take him as a permanent choreographer?" Because sometimes the new choreographers may give you wonderful surprises and they go, could do a better job than the great choreographers. Well, I had the chance to, um, in Zagreb, Eastbrook and Nordhausen, I, I created uh, work for the companies. Yeah. Yes, for the choreographic workshop. Yeah. So I, I, already had, I already have experience as a choreographer. Yeah. And um, as I said, this. Uh, Work with this uh, pupils and in Bamberg I have, and I did my own 
I did even a, a little film. Uh, I did my own film, my own dance film already. Yeah. And I created it in 2010 here in Nuremberg. It's a 20 minutes film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have my experiences. So would love to get, get a get a, hot, a bigger uh, chance to, yeah. to prove myself that that I can inspire. Well, you uh, know, I think that the dance world. Time, time will tell. Time will decide. And uh, now for all dances, for all performing art, we have to wait a little bit, you know. We, uh, we keep doing and perform the usual uh, ballet of repertoire, as one lake, uh, Bayadere, and all these great uh, ballet. But uh, time will tell and maybe mm, will bring some hope in the future, in the in the tomorrow, to see new ballet, new choreographers, uh, because dancers are always dancers, uh, either yeah. classical or, or, yes. or contemporary. But uh, uh, con uh, choreographers may have bring some innovation, may uh, new a new type of oxygen that uh, audience also needs. You know, with all your respect, I have for the pure classical ballet like Swan Lake, like uh, Giselle, which are a wonderful ballet to look wonderful. at. Because yes. are, uh, they are a dream when you do see to them. But sometimes. For instance, I'm not, I'm not doing a critic, but I think you will agree with me. For instance, every year in Christmas, all ballet companies around the world, they give Nutcracker, which is the yes. best ballet. But finally, during in December, from December to January, Nutcracker, you see it in many ballet companies that then you hated as ballet, because it's a repetition, you know, you say, but it's enough with this uh, nutcracker. Let's do something new, some new. It's true. Ballet. I mean, uh, it's always the same thing. Your choreography may change, but it's the same music, it's the same costumes, it's the same snow falling from the sky. Especially in the USA, it's very common to make nutcracker season. <laughs> <laughs> Also in Europe, I mean, Royal Ballet or True. Paris in Italy, everywhere they do. Nutcracker, Nutcracker, Nutcracker. <laughs> Finally, the Ballet Nutcracker becomes a real Nutcracker <laughs> because it's <he's> painted. <laughs> I think that also ballet dancers must feel the same. I mean, every year they put the same costume on and let's go, we do Nutcracker. But why wouldn't you do something new? <laughs> this is what... the Deutsche Oper Berlin. Uh, they did uh, from Ray Barra. He did the uh, Winter, the Snow Queen. Yeah, it was a different ballet. Yeah, that's what they did. Okay. But long time, long time ago. Not anymore. So but we're missing this this new ball new stories. We miss new stories. Let's go. Let's do it. But if the new story do not exist, we must invent them. We must create them. We must find a way, choreographer. Just choose a good book in the in the in the, in the library that where's a good stories. It's but there are plenty it's of full books. of stories. It's just or you just have some more creativity in your mind and you create something on your own. Well, you know? yes. Well, I can do this. So, if you have one day the possibility to do that, Mister Oliver Eximan, <laughs> do it. Okay. One day you'll, be, one day you'll become it. artistic director of a ballet company or a contemporary ballet dancer, ballet company. Do it. Give it to the audience. Give it to the dancers. Create something new on your own. That's, that's a challenge, yes. I, I need to get the, the chance. To, uh, I, I, I don't know where to go and ask and hello. Can you give me a chance, please? <laughs> they will not. They will not give you the chance. They will not give you the chance, because you have to battle for it. You have to create your own chance. You have to create to to battle like Spartacus to build up your own name. That's so true. it's only in this way that ballet companies will make a reverence to you 
and will tell you, Mr. Oliver, uh, Mr. Oliver, you are the fighter and you are doing sure. everything. But if you keep still and you wait that uh, the little mosquito fly from one side of the stage to the other, <laughs> you don't fabricate anything at all. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I have to you fight have for to, it. You have to fight for it. And this is not only for you, but it's for all dancers. Yes. All dancers have to fight in their own way. But they have also to fight, yes, but they have to be united. Because we are, have to fight all together. It's not only Keep one... Keep alive yes. uh, in the dance world that we, exactly. that we are alive and kicking. Yes, that's yes. true. Yes, it's so, so true. <clears throat> I, uh, is there anything more interesting uh, of your career that you would like to highlight as a choreographer, as a teacher, as a dancer? The, experience, the good experiences you had and the bad experiences you experienced, you had also. The most, uh, the most, one very highlight in my life I like to remember is the uh, first international ballet competition in 1995 in Shanghai, Fort mm. It was the first international ballet competition. I was the only German dancer in that competition. And I partnered um, one of the soloists of the National Theater of Slovenia in Ljubljana. She was from Krasnoyarsk, dancer from Russia. And um, she entered the finale and I had to partner her in the finale. And we danced Don Quixote in the finale mm. in Shanghai and in front of uh, the head of the, the president of the jury was Vladimir Vasiliev. Wow. My favorite Spartacus. <laughs> I, I watched this film, this film Spartacus maybe 100 times. And he sit in front of me and had to watch uh, the famous uh, Don Quixote uh, soloist. <laughs> had to watch my solo. It was such a great moment. And, uh, and it was a, and the, it was live public uh, when we, it was the finale, so there was live public also in this uh, finale of the competition. And they were like, they like my my solo. <laughs> they applaud really strong, and I was like, wow, what's happening here? <laughs> and uh, it's it's little Oliver. Thanks to all those famous dancers, they all had a big career, and afterwards too. And uh, I'm also there. <laughs> <laughs> then after the. Um, after the trans after the performance, uh, Vasiliev came backstage and he congratulated me. And for me, this was one of the greatest moments of my life. Still, yeah. so, his words were like this legend. The words were like heaven for you. <laughs> it was like heaven for me. He touched my shoulder, <laughs> like wow, oh, yes, uh, meet uh, Vladimir Vasiliev. Yeah. It was one of my greatest moments in my life. Yeah. And uh, one very, very ter terrible moment was an accident on stage in Meiningen. State Theater of Meiningen is the smallest state theater of Germany. It's a wonderful theater, beautiful theater in Germany. And, um, my director was Xing Peng Wang at that time. We danced very beautiful neoclassical work. And in Fire, Firebird, I was a great magician. Uh, Chai, and I had a fight with the prince on stage, and uh, we had to make a lift, and, and um, it cracked my my back. Oh, yeah. And uh, from this injury, I'm still suffering. I'm still dancing, and, and I still I tried to heal myself, but it took years to heal from this uh, injury. Injury. Yes. It was the worst moment in my life. Injuries in the back are the worse than injury in the knee or in the ankle or in the arms. Uh, in the back, they are very painful and they take a lot of time to... A lot of time. Because uh, many dancers have to stop also due to the injury. I was very stubborn and continued to dance with that injury. 
and I wasn't allowed to go to ballet with this injury. And um, that's all this great stuff. And uh, as you I, say, as you say very well, you have to dance with pain. This is it. I mean, you make yourself a reason. And you say, and you can, you, it's, it's mind work. It's, it's you, mind. You say, Here. Pain does not exist. I'm just having an illusion. And you keep working and you keep you working. Can, yeah. Working. You have to bring yourself in, into this state of mind. Exactly. With breathing. And yeah. uh, then you can. You can push yourself to do it. And, you have uh, to cope. You you have to cope with the pain, and yeah. uh, once you are able to cope with the pain, you see that the pain slowly, slowly disappears. Yes. Sometimes no, but uh, uh, to be honest, no. But uh, uh, just to bend the truth, you say to your body, pain does not exist. Yes, mind but... is stronger. Mind is stronger than body. Exactly. Mind is stronger than body. Yes. Yeah. This is what you learn. This is what you can learn with dance. Exactly. So wonderful. Yes. And after and it's different than sport. Sport, you finish much earlier. Yes. In, in this high level. Yes. With dance, you can dance and maybe 10 years more longer and yes. stay in that. And you can get a more in an experience of your body, even more intense. And with the music together, I can only advise everybody, please dance. Yes. And uh, if I may ask, when you teach to young students or to young dancers, uh, what type of class do you usually give? Is it a mixed uh, repertoire or is it uh, pure classical or is it contemporary? Or uh, how do you have this approach with the dancers, you as a teacher? So... Um... This project in Bamberg, I, I did some mix and you know, contemporary stuff and warm up and stuff. But usually, I only give uh, my knowledge as a classical dancer yes. to the younger generation because there I have the highest knowledge and uh, I'm able to give this to them. Yes. Yes. So, and uh, um, I, I did also contemporary dance and everything. I can I can give also this experience further. But I focused on classical. I have the most experience in classical dance. Yes. Are you the type of teacher who say to the dancers, if you don't do that correctly, you are not going to get out of the ballet studio? Or you are the type of teacher who say, okay, just today is not working and you do it tomorrow? Um, I am patient, but demanding. Good. Patient, but demanding, <laughs> and uh, I I'm always polite. But I say no, it's this way, and I can. Um, the, the good thing with me is, especially in Germany, there is not so many. I would say there's not so many teachers who can explain it in, the, in words. Yes. So good. Bring it to the, to the, the student. People. Yes. Yes. And I think I'm really, this is a good ability of myself that I can bring it really in good words. Yes. And sometimes this is really necessary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. They mostly, the most thing is copy with, with the eyes. I know. You yeah. copy with eyes. It's yeah. the yeah. most important. So the, the, the better yeah. you show, the better can, they can pick it. But um, sometimes they, you, when it's become more into the basics, you need to explain with good words so that it makes click. Exactly. Yes, I agree. I agree. And uh, it's a little bit like my mother. My mother, when she was teaching to me. She used to say, uh, Jean-Pierre, if one day you become a ballet teacher, remember that you, as a ballet teacher, you only have two eyes to correct and to judge. But remember that if you give a class of 20 
dancers, you will have 40 eyes who are looking and staring at you and judging you. Oh, yes. <laughs> take, take care of what you say and what you do during class. Yes. And it's very much about also the, your own behavior. Exactly. This, this is very, very important. Uh, I honor my teachers for their behavior. Yes. It's still, for me, <clears throat> why I'm, uh, where I make decisions even. Yes. Of how they were with me. Yes. In very difficult decisions, I, I watch what did they do. Yes. How did they behave? Especially as a teacher, it really rarely they raised the words. It was you really uh, no, no. We're really calm. Yes. Always. Yes. It's important is to stay calm during class, and because if you are calm, then the 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 way of working of the dancers is also different because yes. they, they feel comfortable and they feel the lack. They feel comfortable, yes. yes. They feel and they concentrate yes. much more than if yes. you have a, a teacher who is screaming or who is, uh, you know, becoming furious during class. It happens. It happens. Yeah, yeah. it's they're also nervous sometimes. I can understand that, but it doesn't help the process. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now your your interview is going to be watched by many people on on uh, YouTube and on uh, Facebook uh, Ballet International. Is there anything special that you would like to say to the young dancers of today to give them some hope of new works, new hope, new breath, new oxygen in ballet of a tomorrow? Well, uh, the flame also for classical dance. Don't focus too much only on contemporary. It is it fascinated also with classical dance. Keep, keep this alive. Don't, don't let this die. Please, don't let this die. Continue classical dance. I love contemporary. I love to watch it. And I'm open for all kinds of styles. Please don't let classical dance die. Well said. Is there anything special that you would uh, direct to artistic director, to ballet choreographers, or to contemporary choreographers that comes from your heart to improve ballet, not just to let ballet, the art of ballet die, no but uh, to make new things, to create new things and give the possibility to create new things. Yeah, give uh, young choreographers the chance to, to show you the, their talent. Yeah, I don't see it enough. Give them the chance. Where is the chance for those young uh, talents? They, they really have to fight strongly. I, I know it also from my colleagues that who trying to get a chance as a choreographer, much they have to fight to get a chance just to show what they can do, what's inside of them. Now give more chance. Yeah. And um, what is uh, <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> problem no problem at all. Um, uh, what is the message that you would like to express, to give to the audience, to the fans of ballet? Of ballet? Yeah, get, get more involved in, in, in the process. Come to the theater, support dance, and uh, support it also financially. Yeah, and, uh, and give more attention also to the dancers. I had soloists in Leipzig, they were like, I'm going out of the stage uh, door and they have forgotten about me. They don't mm -hmm. know who I am. Why mm -hmm. in Germany? Why well, you're not a star? Like, you know, 
but but I think this get is invited or uh, interested interested with them, yeah. And uh, this was missing. I don't know how it is now. I think it's not. I I mean, uh, for example, my last story I had. I was um, at the gala in Dortmund. Xing Peng Wang is the director in Dortmund, and it was a gala. And um, through the crisis we just had, I, I met online. Uh, Gala Brand. She's a very famous prima ballerina from the ABT, American Ballet Theater. She performed in this gala. The only one who gave her flowers was me. Is <laughs> not enough, I would say. She came from New York to, to Dortmund. I mean, not such a big city. It's a big city, but well, the normal city of Germany, and <laughs> was the only one. I'm like, come on! And <laughs> then uh, the public was um, quite, I would say, twenty years older than me. Most of them. And where, where's the young people interested in dance? Come on, come to the theater. Stop watching smartphones. See it real. Be fascinated about dance. I know that uh, in Germany you had uh, Natalia Besmentova, uh, that she was um, Russian, and uh, she passed away many years ago. Have you ever worked with her? What's her name? Natalia Besmentova. Besmentova? Yes. Oh, she's famous. Yes. Have you ever worked with her? No, no. No. I had the chance to work with Iraida Lukashova. She is a very famous dancer from Kiev. And oh. she became director in many companies. In Ljubljana, for example. She was my master in Zagreb. Yes. And uh, I had the honor to work with her in Don Quixote. And they give me a title role in this piece. And she worked with me on this title role. And... Uh, was a was really a great uh, have you experience. have you ever met or worked with uh, uh, Galina Panova and Valery Panov I met them in Bonn when when I was in the school but they were the directors in Bonn I saw many performances yes and I did also audition there and uh, yeah. it was quite amazing I, I read a book from Panov yes Amazing. Amazing. Amazing story and amazing. Yes, amazing story, amazing people. Unbelievable. Yes. And have you ever worked with Egon Madsen? He was one of the. With Mats Eck or with whom? With Mats Eck? Egon, Egon Madsen. So, no. No, no. No, I work with Paul von Schreik in Ljubljana uh -huh. and he was a uh, uh, he's a very famous uh, choreographer yeah from the head national national ballet in Amsterdam it's very neoclassical and he came with the first soloist at that time um, that was in 19, 1994 yes uh, with Clint Farha and they came and uh, they make an Two neoclassical ballets from him, and it was a great experience to work with him. Good, good. And uh, what? Uh, <clears throat> last question: What uh, were the some disappointment that you had in your careers? You know, um, sometimes. Uh, yeah, you know, my disappointment was. Um, I was not patient enough with Zagreb and I left Zagreb maybe too early and uh, always uh, my mind came back to me why you left uh, this company, why you left these people, your friends and they <laughs> loved you very much and uh, uh, you could have gone back also or things like that. but it's a decision. And uh, I made this decision and uh, have to stay for this decision, but it always came back to me because I 
celebrated a very big success with this uh, Don Quixote uh, ballet. Yeah. I, I, they give me a chance as a first soloist there um, to, to prove myself that I can do this with a first soloist as a partner there. And uh, it was after the competition in, uh, in Shanghai, yeah. from Ljubljana, I, I changed back to Zagreb. And uh, so I, ha I had a good time there. Really, really, really good time. Um, do you have uh, Do you have any regrets? I have a big regret that I left uh, Zagreb. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. But on the other hand, I would not have been Leipzig if I would have not left uh, Zagreb. Yeah. And Leipzig was. We had so many wonderful tours around the world. I was in Hong Kong with uh, with the Leipzig Ballet. We dance Uwe Scholz there, and that's a great wow. moment in my life. <laughs> So I, it's a wrong regrets. Huh? And I never regret to, be, to become a dancer and live this hard life. And um, I'm not rich, but uh, I have, I'm full of uh, memories that make me happy when I just think about it. And, and still, when I hear music, I'm in my ballet studio. It's very easy to make me happy. I, I feel comfortable there. If one day, uh, the last question, if one day uh, you would uh, be given the chance to direct a ballet company, yes. do you think you would be able to pass on and to bring the same joy and the same happiness, the same hope and uh, to build up to young dancers who will work with you? I mean, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, maybe you never know. You will become an artistic yes. director. And uh, so do you think you would be able to pass on all of this that you have experienced? Have the same joy um, you had when you were young? I think yes. And uh, if I have a good team, then it will be a big joy. Can't wait uh, for it. <laughs> you have to choose your team also. <laughs> well, I have good. Uh, I have a good team already. <laughs> Just need okay. to call them. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, Mister Oliver uh, Essigman, I wish to thank you with all my heart that you have accepted to uh, make this interview for Ballet International today. Thank me. Thank you very much, Jean Pierre, for this chance speak with you and it was a big joy and, and to I, see you in real life and I'm day. sure that many people will uh, follow your precious words that come from the heart definitely come from the heart and from the heart I thank you for this chance today and um, I wish you all the best my dear Jean-Pierre okay thank you very much and we stay in touch We'll now I'm going to uh, <clears throat> to end the interview for the, the audience. So, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you for the watching this uh, beautiful interview that we had as guest, Mr. Oliver Essigman, uh, who is in Germany. He is a ballet teacher, a choreographer, and a dancer, still dancing, and he outlined. Uh, the most beautiful part of his career and also for eventual future projects that uh, he is still going to build up with all his soul and all his heart. I trust you and you have to do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone who has been followed. You remain online. Thank you. Bye-bye to everyone. <laughs>